maybe we start. Uh, maybe we start with looking at. Um, maybe let's do a little summary. Last week, and and correct me, Elvira. Um, last week we talked about initially about different templates, and we talked about the fact that your resume is really a marketing tool that you can use. And it's, you have to be very careful because you really only have 10 seconds. As a reader, I only have 10 seconds and Elvira only has 10 seconds to really look at the first two pages to see if people are worthy. Now we get tons of resumes. So the question is, what do you do? What do we look for in a resume? What's a winning resume? What's a resume that will not end up in the in the uh, in the in the paper basket in the waste paper waste paper bin. Uh, so so we thought tonight we go from there. You've probably chosen your template, uh, and we thought tonight we would go over uh, a couple of things about skills that you should have in your first um, in your first page and your uh, and your professional summary or your pitch. It's a pitch statement, essentially. Um, Elvira, check me. Is that, is that yes. right? Yes, that is absolutely correct, Jasmine. Yes. Okay. So, so what I thought we'd do is, um, is go over a resume, and I'll just share the screen here with all of you. Uh, now, I said also, we also said last week that we're looking at people that are in an entry-level position, and medium position and also a high position. Uh, I'm gonna start by looking at a high position. Look at how well Vera and I worked the CV and then look at what the result was and how we changed it, okay? Yep. And then Elvira will go over one that is not so senior, but one where she also changed the, 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 um, the CV in the beginning and then changed it uh, a second time. So uh, without hesitation, let me just get my act together here. And okay. So I want to just talk about this resume. This is a person that is very, um, that is very experienced. She's an executive and it says so in the first instance. I'm a seasoned international winemaker, business owner and executive with an extremely diverse portfolio of skills, knowledge, and experience for over 30 years. Originally working alongside my family, owning and operating a family vineyard, winery, and cellar door, and thoroughbred horse stud in the upper Hunter Valley. Now, then she goes on and talks about her, her uh, how she started the winery. Then she talks about the wonderful opportunities she had uh, of working in several for uh, se several vintages in Tuscany and Southern Italy. Then she talks about key achievements, which include building a business from, business from start to finish, project management, systemic and organizational skills. And so I'll let you all cast your eyes to this and just have a little look. She is using, because uh, very important to use action words. So she goes building, that's a good action word, successfully, innovative and successful management, strong skills, meticulous and adept in quality assurance. So she has her key achievements. <clears throat> then she has what we call the five areas where really that, that are transportable skills across many industries. So here she has relationship management, ability to build strong relationships with diverse individuals and groups of people. Then she has leadership, advanced communication skills, advanced organizational management technical skills at a senior level across various departments, advanced communication skills, ability to negotiate and achieve collaborative results in an effective and time efficient manner, team builder, a strong team builder and strong, excuse me, a strong team player and builder of high performance teams driven by the dynamics of working with a values driven team, strategic thinker, advanced problem solving skills, adding a creative and technical edge in achieving goals, customer service facilitated significant achievements in best practice, 
Then she's got her professional details of what she's done in each job. Now, this is all in paragraph form. This is very hard to read if I only have 10 seconds. Would you agree, Elvira? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what we thought we'd do is we got together and we looked at this and said, no, this, this is not, this is not going to work. Um, so what we did was we then looked at another one. Uh, we, we then, sorry, we then reviewed it and we came up with this. All right. And, and this, so this is her pitch summary, professional summary. We may call it a capability statement, but it's a statement that you adapt to the job that you are applying for. So we took the first, first thing that she said, if you notice, this is quite long. <clears throat> and we thought, well, this is, this is too long. I don't have time to read this because people that read resumes, the best thing to do is use bullet points. So, and, and to highlight your achievements. So what we did was we put it into this, this, this lady is extremely, not only is she intelligent, but she is, I know her, she is unbelievably professional and has so much going for her, except the wine industry, as you can appreciate, has collapsed. And it collapsed because we had the fires and it ruined some of the vineyards. Uh, and, and also it is extremely hard now to export wine, particularly since the Chinese don't like us anymore. So, uh, so we came up with this. I am a seasoned international business owner and executive with an expertise in industrial chemistry. I have worked in several international locations such as Italy by leading business delegations and promoting business development. I have been able to market businesses internationally and cross-culturally. As an industrial chemist, I bring extensive experience in all aspects of quality control and assurance in making businesses reach their potential. As you can see, we never yes, once mentioned Sorry. being a winemaker. Elvira? Could we see the other document? Because it yes. didn't come through the, sure. the screen. You Thank you. Now? Yes. Uh, no, the, the second one. Oh, okay. This is the second one. Okay, we can see it. Can you the see one it? That, yes. Yes, that's the one we worked on. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, that's what we said was going to be a professional summary. And what we did is we took the information that she had put in here, including some of the sentences, and we thought we would put it under her, her the summary of skills and professional experience that she has. So as you can see here, we wrote, really the one thing she did not include, which we were surprised, is project management. So she, because she is so, she, she, ha she is an industrial chemist by training. She really has access to many different kind of jobs. And in this case, we were looking at her pitching for a quality control or, or Q quality assurance job. So <clears throat> we wrote project management, building a business from start to finish, implementation of ideas and successful delivery of a profitable business, manage quality production, through innovative and close liaison with laboratories, ensuring that quality assurance was meticulously compliant with the business. If you were to read the previous, previous um, one that I showed here, that we're using all her words. We're just playing around with it so that it looks, so that it looks much better to the eye. And as you can see, when I'm looking at this, at this CV, two things hit me. One is her name, next is her professional summary, and next is the summary of skills and professional experience, which all go into one page. That's how good it is. Relationship management, uh, we added um, ability to build strong relationships with diverse individuals, groups of people within a successful multi-million multi dollar business. She had that. 
and we added strong skills and expertise in the liaising and management of domestic and export sales. So again, we looked at leadership. Under, under leadership, uh, she had talked about managing, I think it was, you know, 30 million liters worth of wine or something, or 30 tons of wine, I can't remember. Well, I'll just look at it here. Here you go here. Um, the systemic and organizational skills and experience required for the operation, production and management of boutique wineries through to 30,000 ton of capacity wineries. Now, that's very impressive, but it doesn't mean anything to, to somebody that's reading the, her resume. It, 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 so I, we just made this up. It could be much more than this. Manage $60 million uh, worth of, and, and I, we shouldn't have put wine there because we didn't want to put wine, did we? No. no. Yep. Um, and maybe we can say manage $60 million worth of sales. I'm just, I'm just playing with that. So uh, advanced communication skills, team builder. So we added all the things she had in, in, on the previous resume to one page and put it all in here. If you notice in this first one, she, you really don't get to know what she's doing until she gets here. And then she goes into the details of her job. And so really, we're, we're already kind of like, okay, well, this is a story of her life. Uh, and, and resumes are not a story of your life. They are a marketing tool. So we're marketing her and we're, we're getting her skills to shine. And looking at the summary of her five skills that she has, that she brings to the table. And this is a really important way of showcasing her skills. Elvira, do you want to add to anything? No, it's perfect. Okay. The other thing I wanted to just say is um, all this, all, uh, this must all be put into bullet points. This is way too dense to read. Uh, if she wants to add this in, because by the time I get here, I'm lost. Um, in the end, she has tertiary qualifications, awards that she's gotten, always include your awards, because that's really important, and her professional affiliations. Jasmine, sorry to interrupt. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if we're looking, are, are you um, looking to documents at a time? Because I we only can see one, and I'm not sure if you're comparing or Maybe it's just me. I just want to double check. Okay. No, I was comparing, and this is the new one. Does the I think, new one I think you're just is, sharing. Are, is this one, I am a seasoned international business owner that you're reading? I'm a seasoned international winemaker, business owner, and executive with extremely diverse. No, no, no. That's not the one I want I think to you're just sharing because there's an option to share only one document instead ah, of at the a whole. Time. Exactly. So just share your desktop. Thank I you, think Dr. that's what, so yeah, I, I, there was something I was confused. Okay, there you go. Is that better? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, right, there we so go. I'll, I'll, I'm very sorry, everybody. Uh, that, no, it's that, all right. It's just a summation. So, so as you can see, we changed it completely. And we included everything in the previous one into this two little paragraphs and then added all this so it's all on one page we but important to know that the information she had was important but it needed to be placed in other areas yeah it makes sense okay. now and then i have here this must uh, must all be put into bullet points because this is too dense and too hard to read okay so that sounds me. good all right. So um, Elvira also uh, was looking at, at a document and yep. Elvira, do you want to, do you want to um, go over your, yes. the one you worked on? Now this yes. is a, somebody that's, uh, that's a, a middle skilled, but they come from the hospitality industry. So it'll be interesting to see what Elvira came up with. Ta-da! Okay, let's have a look. So um, let me, first of all, uh, I'll stop sharing this one and I'll share the proper one. So 
to begin with, to begin with, we had a resume from Alice Apple, mm -hmm. um, who was a hospitality industry expert. That's what her resume reads. So I'll just go over the introduction that she had. So she is looking to uh, go across to a new industry. Correct, Jasmine? Yes. Yeah. So she wants to change careers completely. Mm. But most of her career expertise and experience has been in hospitality industry. And this is what her first draft, the, the resume looks like. So you've yeah. got... Can I just add something too? Please. Um, this woman also put herself through university. So she worked in hospitality professionally. So she worked for very high um uh high volume and expensive restaurants so they were not yeah so go yeah. ahead Elvira. yeah no problem so here we have the very first sentence is outstanding performer in customer service in the hospitality industry boom hospitality industry proven success in leadership operational excellence building rapport and culture expansive knowledge of ingredients, food, wine, and cooking techniques. So she is being very detailed about her experience in the hospitality industry. That's what is coming across from her resume. She then talks about um, uh, multitask work independently or in teams in a fast paced high volume environment an excellent work performance and attendance record. So attendance record, again, there's a few words in there that are very hospitality oriented. She then puts across all the skills. So her skills are dynamic, friendly hostess, uh, passion for customer satisfaction. Uh, then we look at enthusiastic goal oriented worker. So, you know, but there's, there's quite a few words in there, client service driven, uh, cross selling and upselling, social media savvy, that's good, then product sales, account management. So it, it, the, the skills are, are, very, are very varied in her experience. And to my liking, Jasmine, if you would like to um, also contribute, is too many. Yes. Yeah. So it's too many, it's, it can be confusing. So what is she good at in the end? What are we trying to target here? That's right, because you can't be good at everything. Yeah, yeah. So um, we then go into the, the work history. Again, work history is about recipes, cookbooks. Uh, then we have Australian native ingredients savvy eclectic uh, cuisine so all these words that that she's using are all about a uh, world famous chef so is is very hospitality oriented um cv okay so that's the first cv we then with jasmine we had a look at it and we said okay so how do we make this cv a, a, a CV that can be for any type of industry that she might want to go across to. So I'm going to stop sharing this document and I will share the other document where we made the changes. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look. So here, mm -hmm. when we look at the paragraph, we don't have hospitality anymore. Yay! <laughs> Nothing about food. Yeah. So proven track record in customer service satisfaction. Hospitality is about customer service. If you want to be a manager in, in, a, in a supermarket store or, or somewhere that you want to go across, that is a transportable skill. You, you can, you can is very much related about customer service satisfaction. Proven success in leadership and operational management. Uh, building rapport in a multicultural environment. Sell what you're good at. If you, are, if you speak more than one language, if you come from a diverse background, sell that. 
You can sell that. You are good at it. Extensive experience and knowledgeable with different domestic and international food, beverage, and retail products. Have the word retail products is related to supermarket. So food and beverage products. So we're not talking about cuisine expertise or dishes. We're talking about something in general. So during my professional experience, I developed the ability to work and multitask in a variety of work environments. Um, advanced customer focused interpersonal skills with demonstrated sales history, that's good. And ability to work in a fast paced and high volume environment where performance is essential. So it, it's more of a global, um, uh, so, um, pitch of who she is. What do you think, Jasmine? Yes, no, I agree completely. I love it. Um, and, and I love where performance is essential. So, so, so she would be great working for some place like Aldi or Woolworths or Kohl's. Uh, and I'm not saying that's where she should pitch to, but I can just imagine somebody picking up this resume from Aldi or wherever and saying, wow, this, this really looks good. Yeah. And then we went to the skills. So to the skills, instead of having it all over the place, we wanted to bullet point them. Mm -hmm. And this, to my liking, it could have a little bit more work, even though we did make the changes. I think it could have some more work done to it. Mm -hmm. um, so we talk about dynamic and passionate about customer satisfaction. That's quite important when you are going, when, when you are in a hospitality or a customer focused type business, like the supermarkets are, mm. relationship building and management with internal and external stakeholders. So don't be specific about who the stakeholders are. If you can generalize it to internal and external stakeholders, so maybe a supplier of a certain product to a supermarket store is an external stakeholder. You can have internal stakeholders, the team that works within the supermarket. So people know that you can differentiate the type of teams that work in a specific environment. Um, effective multitasker in fast pace and high volume environment. So link the effective multitasking mm -hmm. to fast pace and high volume environment. Um, rapport and relationship building in cross-cultural teams. That's what you're good at. Sell that. Have mm. it in there. So people will say they're able to sort of understand when somebody is asking for a different product in, in, in a different, um, that comes uh, in international product. I mean, Australia, in many of its supermarket stores or across Australia, we don't only sell Australian products. We sell many different products. I come from Melbourne, so it's like <laughs> wherever you go, you will find international products, yeah? Yeah. Um, team leadership and collaboration, opportunities, identification, cross-selling and upselling, using social media platforms. So sell the fact that in today's world, anything digital, anything that is social media, this is how we are marketing. This is how we are communicating. Right now, we are using social media in Zoom to be able to communicate. Yeah. If you're good at this, if you have those skills, put it in there. This is what is selling today. This is what people want. You're good at it, do it. Problem solving um, aptitude and account management. What do you think, Jasmine? Look, I think it's good. Normally we would say four or five skills. We have nine here, but I think that it's okay because there, we don't have anything added to it. Uh, like in the previous recommend, uh, uh, resume, we had relationship management, then we had a little sentence about stuff. Here we've done it a little differently but it's punchy and it's really easy to look at. It's very easy on the eye. Yeah. And then I, uh, we went, Jasmine and I went into the work history. And again, with the work history, 
uh, people, if they like what they see at the beginning, they are going to go through your work history. So with the work history, there was a bit of information that was taken out because you want to go across to a different field. So you need to generalize that information that people reading it, they say they are a multi-skilled person. I see that they can go across to our industry. So for example, in the News Corp experience, we had produced content for highly competitive audience reach. So this is your social media, mm -hmm. your content management system and knowledge that is quite useful here. Uh, they also had um, understanding of commercial partnerships such as coal supermarkets. That's mm -hmm. perfect. That's where you're headed. Use anything that might be within that industry that you have done or has been an achievement for you. Use it. Put it in your resume. Uh, it's going to complement what you have. In um, the, the second uh, work experience, um, I put customer service. So generalize it generalize it what it is about even though you might have been head waitress or or yeah. senior waitress yes yeah so what was that job about customer right. service so generalize it in such a way that it doesn't put you in a pigeonhole mm. what do you think jasmine no i think that's great that's really good because that really makes it friendly as opposed to my saying if i was snooty or if i wasn't really i didn't want to hire a waiter waitress i'd say oh customer service oh well that's an interesting oh okay i mean i i, I would be friendly with it yeah uh and and it's more digestible to someone in another professional field yeah that is actually so helpful i I think for me, one of my main difficulties was like, you come to Australia, well, for a little bit of context, I moved to Australia and my um, my work background was in um, strategic planning and business development, like very corporate, very mm -hmm. uh, like office uh, analytics oriented. And when I first came to Australia, I really wanted to get like, um, like a hospitality job to start with. And I was like, how do I even translate my resume? Like from something so corporate and like business analytics oriented towards um, hospitality. And this would have been so helpful because generalizing the roles and generalizing what you actually did, like teamwork or I don't know, like it yeah. would have been so much yeah. easier. That's, that's a great tip. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and for example, in in the, I'll, I'll just uh, go across quickly to the other screen just to um, show something in particular. So here, for example, in the work experience, she had managed various tasks and provided seamless service to over two hundred guests per night. So. My particular change for that was um, manage various tasks and provided seamless service to over, sorry, uh, it was the same, to over 200 guests per night. Yeah? Did I use the yeah. same? Did I, I use this? I can't, I can't see you. No, screen. sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I, yep, no, I, um, I think it was this one. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I used yes. 200 customers instead of 200 Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah? Ya entiendo. Okay. Yeah? So it, it is, is the same idea that you manage various tasks and provided seamless service, but to 200 customers. Yes. Why to put me, guests? It, yes, to me, it's like we professionalized it. Yeah, 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 and and use the words that help the industry that you want to go to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's what I wanted to to discuss the difference Great. between the two resumes and how uh, Jasmine and I worked on that.
Yes, yes. So, so, so what, what do you get, what do you guys get from this now? What Super. do you, what, what do you get from it? What do you, what can you take away tonight? I think Clara, uh, sorry, I think Clara is raising her hand. So just, okay. like, Clara, go ahead. Hi, I would like to ask a question if possible. Um, sure. You know how you were saying, when you know that you're going to go from one industry to another and you want to translate somehow those skills into yeah. words that make sense to that other industry, yes. what would happen if I wanted, I'm an architect, right? Uh -huh. And I, I am not sure of what I would like to do, but I am getting a little bit clear on the idea that I am going to be changing jobs, but I don't know what that industry will be. So I do have my skills and experience that I'm sure can be translated to other industries. I just don't know what words to use that are generic enough or, you know, that include enough information that someone in a different industry could pick up and say, okay, so this sort of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, is that even possible? Or would I have to customize my CV for each industry that I'm thinking I would like to apply to. Okay, Elvira, do you want to do you want to speak to that, or I'll I'll let you go first because I'm always mouthing off. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's a very good question, and that is a question that I am asked more than once um, on on how how if you don't know exactly where you want to go what type of industry you are going to transfer to then how do you make your your resume um uh i guess as as um friendly as possible so that perhaps wherever you have an opportunity that might be a different industry they will still look at your cv is that your question clara Yes, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, uh, go ahead. So what what I would say is don't downplay what your expertise is about either. So the idea is not to take away that you are an architect, because you being an architect and some of those skills that you have is what is going to be a different CV from all the other CVs that have been tailored exactly for that job. Mm. So you, the fact that you bring architect knowledge or architecture skills might complement an area or a job that you are applying for. Right. Does that so, make sense? Yeah. Yes. So, so one of the things that, that I, I think is that you, you need to really be alert to what, to what those skills are. That's why we, we talked about five or six, you know, different skills. So for example, um, alertness to detail is one of the ones, um, you know, creative, uh, you know, being able to be pr creative uh, across uh, time and cost parameters. Um, but I think if you're going to another um, industry, I think you have to tailor each CV to whatever industry you're applying to. In fact, what I would do is, because Google is so fantastic, let's say, Claire, you were trying to get into, is it Claire or Clara? It's Claire. Claire, okay. Let's, let's say you were wanting to go and be an engineer. I would actually Google engineering and find out what are the key skills of an engineer? I would even look at uh, a resume because in Google you could say you could do um, you can do job description uh, entry level engineer and it comes up all different kind of skills that are needed and I would kind of look at these skills and I would say okay those are the skills I'm an architect what skills in here are trans in here are transportable to here. Uh, so that you then begin to have an idea. You don't necessarily have to worry about um, transferring to a different industry. The research tells us that people will have three to, three to five different careers in their lifetime. So uh, I'll use myself as an example. 
I started out as a clinical psychologist and because I love business, then I went into organizational psychology. So I work in business and organizations. And then I decided to become a mediator. So, so I have a, you know, a bunch of skills there. Uh, and now I'm working a lot in the mediation area, not exclusively, but a lot. So, so does that help you, Cla Claire? It does, it does, yes, thanks. And right. I, I wanted to add something as well, Clara because I know that for architecture, you use design software. Oh, yeah. We do a lot. And that is nothing to sneeze at, That's as we right. say in good English. That's right. Because, you know, the, you, you might have knowledge in a particular software yes. for design that can be used in another industry. And that might be what actually gives you the job is because you are knowledgeable in that software. And also you're comfortable with the technical skills. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so that's, yeah, well well said, Elvira, well yeah. said. Great, thank you. You're Good. welcome, Claire. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see, somebody says, there's something on the bottom here. I, I might be wrong. Okay. <laughs> Don't be shy. We are friendly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a question, <laughs> if <Okay>. I may. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would you guys say? It's like the basic anatomy of a resume. Like, what what should a resume be? <laughs> like, what sections are? Because I've seen so many different templates, and um, sometimes like they 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 put the the, the contact details on top then or sometimes they put them at the end or sometimes they do have like a um like an objective statement they call it sometimes professional statements or others is like a profile like what would you guys recommend uh, for like a basic resume to look like elvira do you have your um do you have your uh the one that you showed last week about the different templates yes i do because I think that because there are a lot of different templates that you can use, and we talked about this last week. Yeah. And, and so basically, the biggest thing that must stick out to the person that's reading it is your name. Your name and where we can reach you. So we're not scrolling to the second or third page or on the side or on the bottom. It's best to really make it big. Yep. Um, great. Okay. And so last week we talked about this, uh, all the different types of resumes, but we, you always have, and Elvira, if you can point to the capability uh, uh, summary or the, or the, um, the pitch. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the so, pitch is so, right here. Yeah. So it's always first, um, uh, Carla, uh, and it's always, it's always where you can see it. Um, okay. So, so, and then, and then it's followed by, and then it's followed by the set of skills. Okay. Um, and here, if you can see on, on this, uh, on this one, Elvira, yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. You could see the set of skills. Now they just name them. Uh, so, so w w you would have to be in preparation for your resume or, or your interview. You'd have to really be clear. Uh, so in here, she has SEO decision making, um, you know, and as someone that's interviewing her, I'd say, okay, can you tell me a little bit about your decision making and how that works for you? What kind of decision making style do you think you have? Uh, and I need to be really clear about what that is. And that's why writing a CV and, and getting um, uh and, and getting a writing your CV and understanding what the interviewing skills are like and really tailoring that resume to the to the people that you are uh, pitching to is important. Uh, it makes a huge difference as to whether you are pitching for Google or you're pitching for company X that has 10 people uh, in IT. Re really, really is different. Elvira, do you want to add anything, honey? 
No, I'm, I'm good with that. And um, I, I completely agree with you in terms of the skills. If you are going to put those skills in there, just make sure that you have a, a story to tell or something that sets you uh, aside from everybody else when we talk about uh, decision making. Yes. What was it within your work experience that makes you a skilled person in that? So, so think of 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 what you are going to relate it to in terms of your work experience yeah mm, mm. makes sense thanks guys um lena she just popped a, l a little question on the chat she yes. um she just wants advice about her achievements the achievements that she has already in her resume i'm not sure if you will and jasmine can see the chat i can see it but maybe good. we could use that as an example and like mm. Okay, increase 30% of the intake and direct to a group of 60 young migrants and refugees adding value to their trajectories in Australia. Excellent. Why is that good? Because next week I'm gonna show you some words to use. They are action words. So increased is an action word. Involve 15 allied organizations, more compare with a year before. I don't know what that, that's not, proper English, to develop workshops, build life skills for young people and achieve success in Australia's multicultural environment. Involve 15 allied organizations, and I would take out more compare with a year before, to develop workshops, build life skills for young people and achieve success in Australia's multicultural environment. Maybe say, I don't know, Elvira, I would say liaised with 15 allied organizations to increase the life skills for young people and uh, a, a, for young people to achieve success in Australia's multicultural environment. I don't know, Elvira, you might use something else. Yep, I, I agree with you. And in perhaps with what Lena is trying to say is, Lena, are you are you um, are you saying that you involved fifteen more or increased involvement of fifteen allied organisations compared to the year before? Yes, sorry, um, it's because I was in a library, so that's why I couldn't I okay. couldn't talk. But oh, now okay. I'm here, here, here now. Sorry, yep. hi. Oh. Hi. So yeah, it's um. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. It has really helpful the, the session and um, I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. It's our pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, so I just want to compare that um, through that year and uh, I add value to the uh, program and I engage uh, 15 uh, organizations, obviously compare with the, the, the year before I arrived or oh, I study in this organization. Obviously the English there was a bit. <laughs> That's okay, honey. It's okay. I learned to speak English, so I know that <laughs> know how I know how what a bastard it can be to learn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it seriously can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God. Dios me libre. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. So okay. So if that's the case, Elvira, if that's the case. I wouldn't include anything in the year before. Would you, Elvira? No, if, if that's the case, that you added value by, by you involving, maybe you can say 15 new allied okay. organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was something that they had never seen before, and that was your absolute achievement. What and do I you wouldn't think, Jasmine? Yeah, and I wouldn't put involved, I would say liaised with 15 allied organizations okay. to okay. to increase the life skills for young people, uh, uh, for young people in or for young people in order to uh, uh, help them achieve success in Australia's multicultural environment. Okay. Does that sound Elvira? Absolutely. Completely okay. agree. Yep. Uh, then delivered 52 nonstop sessions through, that's T H R O U G H, love. Delivered 52 nonstop sessions through one year for young migrants and refugees, improving the structural approach to the program, ensuring its ongoing success. 
Um, Lena, can you, do you have an opportunity to tell us a little bit about that? Um, yes, it's just the, um, because these um, sessions were like all over the weekends. Yeah. So it means um, for, for them, for the uh, young migrants and refugees were like, um, they rely on these sessions. So it didn't, I was committed to do it and deliver all these sessions through, through one year, like nonstop. That's why I said like um, that word, but I'm not sure if it's really um, clear because I just wanna say the, the session never stopped like the program because I was just there. Did you, like, did you create the program? No, the program was already, already. Um, um, I mean, this organization created the program, but what, but the difference was like, I was committed to just do it every single weekend, every single weekend. And um, it creates like a bond, like a relationship yes. with, with them. Okay. So it, is, it was really important because it's um, a space that, um, uh, was a safe space for them and they were um, always you know happy just to be just around other young migrants and refugees so okay can yeah. I can I give it a go Elvira see what you think um, conducted and deliver co conducted 52 um, non-stop sessions over a year to assist young migrants and refugees. Um, what was the first thing? What, remind me what you just said again two minutes ago because I had it and it went out of my brain. Um, yeah, what did you said, just say? Um, like rela um, it was a safe space. Oh, um, that's it. Yeah. A safe space. Um, yes. uh, conducted uh, and delivered 52 non-stop non -stop sessions to, to ensure a safe space um, so that migrants and refugees could improve blah, 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 and ensure its ongoing success. Elvira, what do you think? Am I on the right track? I think it, abs it, it is absolutely spot on, and I'm going to use my uh, statistics side of thing sure. just to put a bit of light on that, Sure. that, you know, there are 52 weeks in one year. Yep. And what it shows to me, because we have 365 days, 364 days, and 52 weeks means that you know how to be committed to a project or anything that you are involved with and, and that you are able to engage people at multi-levels. So the way Jasmine put that paragraph across, my analysis, if I was to look at your CV, I would say this person is able to be committed for 52 weeks within a year, every single weekend to a program. If I am running a project, I want you. I want yes. you to be in my project. Yes, because you'll persevere. That's a very big word in English, persevere. That yeah. means that you have what we call stick to it is stick to it <laughs> You can really <laughs> stick to it and you will not <laughs> let go. And that's important. It's and, to, it's stick to it. Could you say it again? Sorry. Yeah, a stick to it ism. That's okay. a ma I'm, I made that word up, so it's not a real. Word. <laughs> but the word is called perseverance. Perseverance. Yeah. P e r s e v e r a n c e. Yeah, perseverance. And okay. commitment as well. I I really like that word. I I know. Commitment. I love the word commitment. And Oh, I, once I made this really silly mistake. So you know how in Spanish, uh, compromiso mm -hmm. is commitment. I translate it as compromised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally wrong. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does, sweetheart. That's right. And, and something, Lena, that I also want to rescue here, Jasmine, if you will allow me. Sure, love. 
is engagement. You know yes. how hard it is to engage young yes. migrants and refugees. Yes. You you have to be at 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 a um, at at a at a level that means that you you have engagement ability. Exactly mm -hmm. right. This and, is what and, I have in my LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Ability to engage. Yes, okay. absolutely. Does that help, Lena? Oh yes. Wonderful. Thank okay. you so much. I'm taking no. notes here. Thank you. No worries. No worries. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, guys, guys, did do you have any more content for today, or no, we're just only with us. questions? No, that's because it we, us. it's already been an hour. Can you believe oh it? It didn't feel like an hour. <laughs> so I think uh, no, that if was you like guys, five minutes. if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, Maria, Clara, Lena. And the other Maria, we have two Marias tonight. Um, if you don't have any more questions, we might wrap it up. So, um, I, I am Maria Elvira as well, you know. Oh, so many Marias. <laughs> and I'm Jasmine Maria. <laughs> Are you really? See, my, uh, gosh, I have, a, I have about five names. Maria, <laughs> Jasmine, Maria, Luisa, Miguela, Francisca, Sliher. <laughs> are you serious jasmine i didn't know this about you that's really cool that's it baby <laughs> well you picked you picked the, the one you like better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot to pick from i only have one you should you see my one. passport <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny all okay. right guys well if you guys don't have any more questions, um, we're just gonna wrap it up for t tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in here with us. Um, really happy that we're uh, being able to help you. And um, we're, we know it can be tough to like translate resumes and like understand how the, um, the Australian um, professional market works and all that. So this is why uh, Jasmine and Elvira are here to help. And uh, just remember, these sessions are going to be um, happening on Tuesdays at 7.30. Um, I think we're down to, we got six more sessions, I believe. Yes. I believe yes. so, yeah. So we got six yes. more sessions. We're going to talk all about cover letters and interviews as well in the next sessions. So make sure that you guys tune in as well for those. And if you have any questions, concerns, uh, feedback, suggestions, please, uh, I'm going to share my screen. and. Um, with all of our contact information. Just yeah, please? can I add something, Carla? I oh, think sure. the, the whole idea for us was to be able to help you survive, revive, and thrive. We want you all to be a success. The Latin American people that I have met that have come to this country are unbelievably talented. So all three of us want you to really make it and really to thrive. And so we're hoping that this content really helps you. And again, if you have any questions, uh, you can always contact us. For sure. Um, we have all of our, the, our contact details on the screen right now. So uh, we do have a digital platform. It's uh, just somos21.org. And it's basically kind of like a LinkedIn in a way, but uh, we created this to co um, make connections with other Latinos and um, Australians that are involved in this community. Um, so just feel free to pop into the webpage, create your, um, your profile and you will also get the notifications of every events we do. We usually in normal times do um, you know, physical events as well, not only virtual, but well, right now we're just only doing this this way. Um, so yeah, just anything you want to say <laughs> or, or ask, send me an email or a, a message in one of our social media um, pages and we'll be in touch thank you so much again and yeah thank we'll, you everybody. we'll see you next next thank you week so thank, thank you everyone. thank You're you welcome. take care you guys take, take care guys care. Bye, bye 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 see ya